Hey, Dan, it's time for Behind, Behind the, the Buffer. Buffer. Welcome to Behind the Buffer, a presentation of the Owner's Pride podcast. If you find enjoyment or get some good knowledge from Behind the Buffer and the Owner's Pride podcast, please take just a moment out of your busy, hectic detailing schedule to hit the like, subscribe, and share button. It helps so much and... If, you, if everybody just does it, I'll quit asking. <laughs> Today on Behind the Buffer, I have Mr. Luke Hagen from Hagen Surface Protection in Santa Cruz, California. Luke, how are you doing today, sir? I'm good. Thanks, Dan. You are welcome. Thanks for joining me on here um, for your Behind the Buffer. As you know, Behind the Buffer is where we turn the spotlight onto you, the detail business professional and kind of uh, explore your business journey. So as always, we jump into the Wayback Machine. And we go back to your very first memory of ever washing, detailing, doing anything like that to a car. I would be washing my dad's truck. And he's also, he owns a construction company. And I would wash the company vehicles on my summer vacation. Oh, nice. How, How old were you when you started doing this? probably 10 or so old enough just old enough to do it so this is pretty incredible you are 10 years old and you had already essentially started your detailing business because you were detailing yeah. and getting paid for it right out of the shoot i was yeah like probably they made 20 bucks probably and how many hot wheels did that buy you a lot <laughs> and i mowed my grandpa's who lived my grandpa lived down the street and i would mow his lawn and his neighbor's lawn every week Okay. Now, did your dad own his construction company? Yeah, my grandpa that I just spoke of, he started the construction company, and my dad and his two brothers eventually took it over. Okay, so you come from an entire family of entrepreneurs. Yeah, my grandma was an interior decorator, and she had her own business as well. Okay, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Nobody was a slave to the man. No. (laughs) <laughs> okay, so um, we start fast forwarding a little bit. Did this continue on every summer? Were you doing these cars? Uh, no, once I got turned 16, then I had to go to work doing the construction. So like, uh, not so much car detailing anymore. I was sort of enjoyed washing my car, but didn't take it as seriously as I do now. Yeah. What kind of car was that first car that you got? 79 four-wheel drive Toyota truck. Nice, nice. A, a Tacoma that, or a bigger one? Yeah, it was a Tacoma. It was blue. had a built-in lumber rack on it. It was the construction company's dump truck for taking trash to the dump. It was free. Got and being a Toyota, even though it was a 79 and it was used for construction, it's probably yeah. still on the road today. I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> my, my dad's younger brother, he bought it brand new. And then eventually came to me. I love that truck. All right. So when you were washing your own vehicle, what, what what were you using to wash back then? I mean, knowing for sure that technology has really come a long ways and products have changed as well as your knowledge has changed. But what what were you doing back then? Oh, for sure. Dish soap, armor all and Windex. <laughs> that armor all. It would look like somebody spread out a chicken, a fried chicken dinner yeah. on the dashboard. <laughs> and I remember one time I did my dad's truck and I had covered his steering wheel and all his pedals in armor all and he almost crashed so i learned very young not to do that yeah i too um had to be told do not put this on the steering wheel anymore <laughs> yeah. i remember he had a, like an old chamois that was like rock hard that i would have to get wet hey those things were awesome though really yeah. the old um skin chamois i d- i really still like those i don't know what exactly has happened to them they've really gone by the wayside to the microfiber towel yeah. but um there's still synthetic ones but yeah. yeah those water sprite deals i like those old ones except if you left them in the bucket too long they would get all like sinewy and like slimy feeling yeah they were weird. That, that part was a little bit gross that or beach towels for sure so yeah. okay so um you get out of high school how long how long did we work in the construction or did we go to school for something or did we- um yeah till about i was 18 then i moved to hawaii for about a year and just surfed there and then came back and then in the meantime my family had moved to colorado to continue construction and then i moved there 
for construction tomorrow. Nice, nice. And I, I see you have yeah. skateboards back on the wall. So, um, so, and you mentioned surfing. Do you still surf? Occasionally. Yeah. It's funny how that kind of, t- uh, as life gets busier and busier. T- yeah. T- yeah. Yeah. It consumes um, a lot of time. It really does. Now, when you went to Colorado, did you start skiing? Um, I had already been snowboarding at that time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I showed my age. I talked about skiing. Now it's all snowboarding. I skied when I was, when I was a kid. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. So, um, so you go to Colorado, they transfer their business to Colorado. How long mm-hmm. do you, uh, continue on with that? Um, until about 12, 12 or 14 years ago, maybe. Okay. And... Ten, no. and then I got into detailing 10 years ago. Okay. So how did the, how did the one end and then what happened in the, in the between time and what led you back into detailing? Um, in between jobs, my, I was looking for some extra work and my neighbor washed boats at our local harbor here. And so I started helping him and really enjoyed it. Okay. And maybe it's a, a, a crunchy point or something, but how come you stepped out away from the family business that was already like set up and thriving? Yeah, it just wasn't working out. Crunchy, crunchy. Okay, good enough. Okay, so um, you start washing boats and you're, you're g- gaining a new skill because you'd only done cars before, but not professionally. Um, how did that translate into detailing on the car side? And then did you work for somebody else doing that for a while? Or, or what was the catalyst that made you decide to start your own business? Um, when I started working with my neighbor, he had said, if you like it, he didn't mind if I started picking up some of my own jobs on the side. So a couple of years into the boats, I started doing that and then just kind of fell back into car detailing because I've always been into cars and taking care of, I have like old, couple of old cars. I still have an old 66 Cadillac. And so I enjoyed sort of detailing that and just kind of made sense to kind of do it all. Nice. Nice. Do you do car shows and stuff? Are we restored or are we rat rod or? Well, I did before. It's still at a storage facility in Colorado because I don't have room for it here. It's too big. Uh, yeah, it's only about 72 feet long and um, 15, yeah. 20 feet wide, right? It's massive. It's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a 66 Coupe de Ville that's been like customized hydraulics and stuff. On it. Yeah, gas was like 65 cents a gallon back then, and it just did not matter. Can <laughs> you imagine with today trying to drive that oh, here gosh. in California? <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I take the hot rod to the gas station, and it's twenty dollars just to go a mile down the road to get to the gas station to put gas in it. Yeah, crazy, exactly. crazy sign of the times. Okay, so into cars, you started doing some jobs on the side. Um, did you take classes, or or how did you? It's, the, it's easy to go just start doing the cars and making some money, but you have mm-hmm. a legit business that you've grown now. Yeah. So how, how did it go from kind of just doing those side jobs? What were the steps that you had to take to make yourself have a business business? Mm, determination. I wanted to do it. And, uh, lot, learned a lot on YouTube. I would pick a, like a subject and kind of watch all the videos and then see, pick and choose what worked best for me from everybody's, like um, all the choices I had. And then, figure out my own way okay i I did the ida i'm certified through there but never really any training training just on the job figuring it out and then how had so for 10 years you've had this business now right um probably five now i'm starting my fifth year of being completely solo on my own and then i did a couple years of working with my neighbor and also having my own Got it. kind of firing it up. Yeah. Super smart. You cover your own butt while you're getting the other thing up and running. So that's, um, yeah, it was super convenient to be able to just do it slowly and build it as I was like still able to work in the same field. Okay. Are we, um, solo operation now or do you have employees? Do you bring in helpers? At the moment, employees coming soon. Okay. Yeah, and, uh, we're shopper mobile. 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 
easy to do out here in California. I can't I can't imagine yeah. the fellas back east or in the northeast being mobile, but I still run into guys who are. Yeah. I'd like to have a shop someday if it if it happens. Not much space out here for that right now. Yeah. Always seems easier to scale a business if you do have a shop because then you can have employees and kind of keep tabs on them and yeah. sending them out into a van with your name on it is a, a scary proposition. And I've not seen yeah. very many people that have been successful at scaling a mobile detailing business. It'd be difficult for sure. Yep. So along the way, everybody's had little trip ups and accidents and mistakes. What's some uh, a mistake that you made along the way that you learned a lesson from? Uh, jumping into stuff too quickly, not quite knowing what to do. Mm. Example? Uh, I don't know. It's, oh, it's... I know. It's right there. It's right on the tip of your tongue. Uh Gosh, not right. sure. We'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. Um, how about has there been any? Uh, I know you said that you um, took the uh, the YouTube University courses. Mm-hmm. Um, have you um, read any books or um, had any other kind of courses along the way that um, you know things that have really helped you with the business side as well as the detailing side? Um, just getting fired up on the business side lately. Um, Got a we did. We had our first business development class like a week ago, so I have to listen to that audio book, and then just have a, not much for reading. So, yeah, that's why I threw you one that you just listened to. It's like you're reading yeah. it, but all you got to do is just sit there and do something else. Yeah, that's. I figured you would be done by now. <laughs> I'm working. On, I've been a little bit busy. Fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. It is near the holidays. Yeah. Um, so if you, if you were to kind of shake the magic eight ball and, uh, what's it say is in store for you in the next five years and 10 years, where do you plan on taking this? We'd definitely like to have an employee or two, um, scale the business. A shop would be great. And then maybe product line. I've dabbled in that a little bit last year, like a, a boat, boat line. But products. Nice. Of your own products? Mm-hmm. Neat, neat. Yeah. Um, speaking of products, you uh, have come over to Owner's Pride. Can you mm-hmm. speak to a little bit about how that has been for your business? If it's been um, any advantages or any bright points that you see in working with us at Owner's Pride? <sighs> that warranty is amazing. And then the products are awesome. And the Eco Wash, I just, I washed a plane uh Last week with Eco Wash and uh, Ceramic Plus and the detailer, money. It's good. Nice, nice. Have you brought the uh, the products into your house at all? Because I, I'm telling you, Eco Wash, we use it on the floors, on the wood and travertine floors, as well as the oh, steel, yeah. steel appliances. Awesome. Shower doors with the spotless was awesome. Yeah, yeah. I did an experiment mm-hmm. with that on the in, in the way back. And um, it really does work. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah it was good. Uh, what what has been um, your best service or what what do you mostly focus in? Um, and the reason I ask this is a lot of the detailers that I know have kind of shied away from doing the detailing stuff of detailing. And they really focus just on polishing cars and putting ceramic coatings on them, which I would imagine leaves a pretty big void for other new detailers to come in mm-hmm. or people that are trying to grow a business and need to keep employees busy. But um. What's the main focus of your business? Has is it always been with coatings and polishing, or do you do everything? Uh, everything. I, about half of my business is um, in the marine space, which I live like right across the street from a big harbor here. So I have a like a good list of clients where I do like regular maintenance, washing on their boats, and then. Detail those, polish them and stuff every six or 12 months, and then occasionally some boat coatings, and then all the kind of standard auto detailing, and then pet correction and coatings as, as well. And Very then cool. a little bit of RVs, and then dabbling my feet in uh, aircraft. 
Nice. And you know, we will, uh, in the springtime this year, be having uh, warranty programs for boats and RVs and motorcycles. And heck, I think you're even going to be able to put them onto um, like a golf cart and put a warranty nice. on it with all compliant warranties. So yeah, awesome. a lot of really cool, cool stuff coming up. Um, back when I detailed, I also did boats. Um, and I loved how it kind of broke my day up and let me go hang out in the marina on like really cool boats. I did the inside and the outside of boats. Do you also do the inside of boats for your clients? Mm -hmm. Clean yeah. up the bathrooms yeah. and make the beds and sure do all that stuff. Yeah. Pretty yeah. darn neat. Yeah. It's nice because it keeps like it keeps it interesting. So I'll be going back and forth between cars and boats. Yeah. It's nice. It's Something that I always um, found really cool too, so especially if I was out there by myself and I'd be up on the fly bridge and I would just kind of kick back and, you know, take a relax while I was in the marina. Um, yeah. Here in San Diego, oftentimes I would share the docks with some great big old sea lions. Do you guys get sea lions up on the docks? Yeah, yeah big ones. <laughs> they just kind of get up there and uh, yeah. relax into the sun. Really fun though. People yeah. in the middle of the country have no idea. No. no. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, do you also do uh, teak, uh, the reconditioning with the teak part A and part B stuff? No. There's a couple of people that do that. I, I would if I got asked, but I, I don't really offer it. Okay. Any uh, of the restoration services like sea tall or varnish? Mm -mm. You say, no, man, I'm cleaning the boat. I yeah. didn't say I'm building I'll, them. I'll use like that, that two-part <laughs> deck cleaner. Mm -hmm. that tea cleaner that's that's all i'm done okay that's good i again i really like that um i like how it mixes your day up and, and yeah it, it's boats are a whole different thing too so yeah. it could be raining outside and a car would cancel on you being mobile but a boat you just show up and still do the boat yeah so it's, it's good stuff i like it mm -hmm. um What's been your favorite part about having your own business? Mm, freedom, just being out there by myself, just enjoying, enjoying the day. Yeah. There is a certain, a certain amount of tranquility that comes with that. Yeah. Do you have a dog? No. So I have two I have cats. Huh? Two cats. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. They wouldn't be as fun to take to work with you. So, I used to yeah. take my dog when I rolled by myself all the time, and it was um, it was really cool. Especially if yeah. you got really if you got mad at somebody or you got a little salty, um, you just get back in the van, and the dog will <laughs> give you a big lick, and yeah. you know, it, it would be dogs hard to be mad. Yeah, I had dogs growing up. Do you plan on adding any other services to your uh, like other than detailing? Do you have any other services like paint touch up, windshield repair, paint protection film, maybe um, door edge guards or door cups, um, headlight um, restorations? Yeah. If I could get a shop, that was kind of the purpose of naming my business surface protection is to give me like a broad like view of different things that could be done and then have divisions in between that for like marine and detailing and then paint protection, vinyl, tint. Nice, nice. Yeah. That's, um, you know, I, I kind of, I thought you were going to almost say yes already because of the name of your business, which was very, very forward thinking of you. Yeah, that was kind of, that was the, the goal someday. And what do you think about um, all of the other detailers? There's definitely a lot of detailers in Southern California. I mean, all over the country, but... Um, if you look at the East Coast and the West Coast, like all along the coast, I think there's the highest concentration of detailers by far than the people that are in the middle of the country. How's it been um, hanging out with all of the other people and like meeting other detailers? It's uh, they're they're quite a quite a crew. Yeah, definitely. There's one detail shop that's down the street from me, and we're we're friends. And then there's a couple other mobile guys that I see occasionally, but I haven't met yet. Um, do you do any of the trade shows for the business? Uh, Mobile Tech Expo is coming up here in Clearwater or Tampa, no, in Orlando, Florida. There I'm going to name every place except for the right one. Orlando, Florida, January 27th, 28th, and 29th. And it looks like it's shaping up to be a really big show. 
I've always kind of found these industry shows are a really great shot in the arm for when you sometimes are starting to feel a little burnt out because you get to go hang out with all of these industry peers. And um, I think just the socializing and networking and um, bouncing ideas off of each other are, is so huge and such a shot in the arm for a business. Have you um, done any of the shows like SEMA, Mobile Tech? or? Not yet. It's a goal. I would love to go. January 27th. That's next yeah. month. That's true. I'd love to see I you there. <laughs> Are you going? I am going. I'm, I'm actually, Damon and I are speaking on Education Day, um, cool. which you, you'll, if you are there and you see it, it will be very similar to the first business coaching session uh, that we kind of went over because uh-huh. it's really a nice foundational piece to do. Uh, and then we, yeah. Owners Pride, will have a booth there. So, yeah, we will be nice. there for sure. Love to see you there. I'll give it a shot. All right. So um, what what to you, to Mr. Luke Hagan, what is your definition of success? Mm, Setting a goal and or goals, personal or business, and then working towards reaching that goal and not being caught up when you hit a roadblock or a, a speed bump. Just get back up and keep plugging away and and get there. Yep. Yep. You got to, you have to be like that when you have your own business to be successful. Mm -hmm. You just have, this is not for the weak. Nope. Yeah. You're not going to win everything every time. So just learn from it and try again. What's your, what's your favorite to do boats or cars? Which would you prefer? If they said you can only do one, you can't do both anymore. I do cars. All right, all right. If somebody wants to find Luke Hagen and Hagen Surface Protection, how do they get a hold of you? Uh, website, HagenSurfaceProtection.com. Facebook page, same name. Instagram, same. All the same name. Well, there you have it. Yet another one of the professional detailers in the Owner's Pride Network of Authorized Installers. I would let you coat my car. Cool. I absolutely will. I'll be down an eight-hour drive. <laughs> awesome, man. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to join me on Behind the Buffer from the Owner's Pride podcast. We have a good future together. I'm excited to grow with you. I'm excited as well. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Behind the Buffer, a presentation of the Owner's Pride podcast brought to you by Owner's Pride Car Care Products. Until next time, stay glossy. <laughs>